even the Star Trek magazine did like a cover, did like a, a an article about me with photos and stuff. They did this whole full page photo of a Ferengi, Jeffrey Combs' is Brent. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Terak Nor with the amazingly talented cast of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So without further ado, let's travel down the wormhole and see who we find. Our first and returning guest is an actor whose body of work includes the Reanimator series, The Frighteners, Justice League Unlimited, and The Further Adventures of Batman. Today joins us to discuss his numerous Star Trek roles, including several Wayoons on Deep Space Nine. Please welcome back the always amazing Jeffrey Combs. Hey, how is hey. everybody? We are good, Jeffrey. How have you been? Well, I'm good. I had a little tech issues here that kind of raised my blood pressure, but I'm good now. We, we are good. We are we are good. Absolutely. Too. Well, glad is everything in your corner of the world. Everything is well. Yes, the sun is out. The, the, the heat is blazing down. Uh, I have a pool. It's uh, the beach is not far away. I'm good. All right, right on, right on. Well, let's bring in the uh, culprit we think might have been behind those tech issues. He is an actor whose credits include Broken Arrow, The Pelican Brief, and Legacy. Today, he joins us to discuss several Trek roles, including Legate Gad Dagmar of the formerly of the Cardassian Union, later of the Cardassian Liberation Front. Please welcome back the always awesome Casey Biggs. And then what happened, Jeff? What do you mean may have been behind the tech issues? There's no may about it. It's him. I blame him. Take your little finger, push the little button. Um, hey, I'm happy to be here, you guys. Can't wait to hear what you got to, to say and to chat about. So cheers. Thanks for coming. Oh, uh, Casey, welcome back. Always a pleasure to have you here, boss. Glad to be here. Just uh, don't mess with our other guests' uh, text, please. Please, please. We appreciate it. Yeah. Jeff is the only one that's fun to mess with, so there we are. I'll grant you on that. It has been amusing to see him with, but, you know, it's just, you know <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the host. I'm supposed to be neutral, but I am. Yeah. <laughs> and our next guest, she is an actress, singer, and co-founder of the Pop Culture Hero Coalition, whose credits include Fist of the North Star, The Flash, and Star Zinger. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Dabo Girl and later First Lady of the Ferengi Alliance. Alliance. Lita, please welcome back the always lovely Chase Masterson. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much, Patty. What a nice oh. intro. Oh, well, thank you. of those credits in a while. Oh, well, I, I, try, I try, to, try, to, try to give everybody, I want our audience to know that you're more than what you're just here for. And as always, Chase, absolute pleasure to have you here. How is, how is the uh, Pop Culture Hero Alliance Coalition doing these days? Pop Culture Hero Coalition is doing incredibly powerful work. I'm grateful and happy to say that this little organization that I founded in 2013 is now the mental health program for YMCA of the USA for children, teens, and parents nationwide. Fantastic. And thank That's you. Fun. And that is very much in thanks to the support of fans out there like you guys who are watching. And um, we've created all of this incredible work, beautiful uh, beautiful work created by psychologists who are pop culture fluent. So it's all evidence-based and, and really, really changing lives. Absolutely. Well, Chase, again, I, I thank, I thank you and I admire you for, for, for taking up that cause and all the work that uh, you and your compatriots and organization has done. It's really made a difference. And, and thank you for that. Really. Thank you. It'll, I'll just say it's been a tough pandemic for all of us. I mean, there have been issues of, you know, everybody needing to have extra resilience and extra self-compassion and extra tools that we all need and generally aren't taught. And so that's what we're teaching is just healthy tools to get through life. And um, it's really exciting to see the, the changes in the work we're doing. Our fans support us through BeKindMerch.org. If anybody wants to support out there, we have these Be Kind shirts that all of the cast have been uh, have been wearing to support our work. So thank you, cast. You know, it's an incredible thing that you did, and I love my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am grateful for all of your support. It's, it's, uh, it's part of what has helped us expand this work. So thank you. 
And and I thank you. Thank you for that work. And thank you for joining us here today on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank and you. now let's introduce the character that had a significant effect of your character on Deep Space Nine. He is an actor whose body of work includes Sliders, Barton Fink, and the Rocketeer. Today he joins us to discuss the role of waiter, engineer, and eventual individual Grand Negus of the Ferengi Alliance, Rom. Please welcome Max Grodenchik. Max. Hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> Here I am. Hey. Max, Here I am. thank you for joining us. How are how are you in your corner of the world? Uh, over there, everything's everything's great. I uh, can't complain. Uh, wish there was no COVID. Jeffrey but, sure uh, has, but that's another thing. Who, 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 who. What time is it there, Max? Uh, it's not ten minutes after ten. Ah, in the evening. At night, ten ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Oh, so. Everything's Enough. good. Uh, I don't think I've ever done this before with you, Patty, and I, I don't know if the other thing I did counts. So, so uh, this is like my 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 virgin. Uh, uh, what do you call this? What uh, uh, we, we call this? Maiden voyage. You're yes. deflowering. You're is, being deflowering. This is virtual. You're it's virtual. Your debut, uh, we we call this forum the GalaxyCon virtual stage, and yes, it's a it's a virtual convention experience. Uh, this is my first virtual convention experience, and I thank you for having me. And uh, I'll try not to disappoint anybody. Oh, uh, I, 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 I think that would be impossible, sir. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for your, <laughs> thank, thank you for taking the chance on us for uh, joining us on our forum. I know we've had so many fans excited uh, to get you as well as the rest of the rest of you today. And so let me say once again, thank you all for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I just love to throw this out. Um, of course, uh, a very special effects, a makeup effects, a heavy show. Well, as long with all those fantastic scripts and all the challenges that come with it, what for each of you, what was the wildest day on the Deep Space Nine set? I have an answer. I think it was <laughs> the last day when everybody was in VIX. Uh, the last episode of the last year of Deep Space that was a pretty overwhelming day to me. Everybody was in there. Everybody was uh, either a guest uh, for the, sh for, it was an incredible, uh, we, you know, it's a big cast, but rarely are we all in the same place at the same time. Yeah. I'll have to agree with that. I mean, what was extraordinary is Jeff and I, particularly, we didn't, you know, we had to, we, we didn't have to be in makeup. No. We had these really cool slick suits on. We were just, we, we were, were free. Free and party, partying at Vicks, but we definitely got our faces in there, didn't we, Jeff? Uh, we every chance we could. If the lens can see you, <laughs> see the lens, then the lens will see you. We we, we learned that Max, lesson. Max and, uh, uh, and and Chase, were you guys in that out of makeup, or were you in that in the makeup? Were you in the last day, the last shot, the last thing? I was not because they said I would be too recognizable, ah, but yeah, I was absolutely. there. I, yeah. I made sure that I was there, can, of yeah. course. We all, and I, I remember it as the last day that we were all together. And really? the wonderful, wonderful thing about Deep Space Nine is we knew what we had when we had it. It was a show that we all appreciated being on for so many reasons. And I, uh, just briefly, a story that I love to recount is, Please. I'm sure you guys remember, when we were at lunch, usually everybody had lunch in their trailers. It was all just kind of, you know, separate. But that one day, they catered lunch for everybody, a cast and crew of about 300 people, who uh, we all gathered on a soundstage. And Ira Bear, really the heart and soul of this show, in both ways, in both pathos and comedy, he got up on the side of the soundstage, um, climbed up one of the scaffoldings so that everybody could see him. And he told us with tears in his eyes and in his voice, what being on this show meant to him. And that doesn't usually happen in television to have somebody with his talent and power to, to, to be so humble and so lovely and kind is just not not something that happens every day. And I think that's part of why this show was so powerful is because it was written by guys with that kind of heart as Ira's and I'll never forget those moments. Well said. Thank you. I agree very much. Max, what do you say? You know, that day sticks out in my mind too. Uh, I remember I, Ira climbing that ladder so he could, so he could see all of us uh, and uh, 
talking about how he felt the show we had done had made a contribution to the Star Trek, to the world of Star Trek. And um, I remember that, but but I think nothing too wild. Uh, except probably the wildest thing that happened was when uh, the, the makeup people put Armin's uh, nose on me and uh, then uh, I got yeah, Armin got my nose, so that was that's probably the wildest thing. And you know what's amazing yeah. about that, Max? You know what's amazing about that? No one what noticed. You know, <laughs> Dean Jones, Dean Jones, who did Renee's makeup, Dean Jones noticed. And, yeah, uh, of course, another, uh, there another, are uh, there are subtle differences, but everybody thinks the Ferengi all look alike. So yeah. mm, it was, uh, it was that's a, just extra, racist. Extra, yeah. extra forty <laughs> minutes of makeup. But, uh, really, even the Star Trek magazine did like a cover, did like a, a an article about me with photos and stuff. They did this whole full page photo of a Ferengi, Jeffrey Combs' his brunt. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's probably as well the internet wasn't there because I'm sure five minutes on screen somebody was like, wait a minute, they've changed the makeup. That's all I, that, that's that, that. Uh, he's wearing cork's nose. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Max, well, listen, I think you to, should tell to, to have the wrong noses once in 40 episodes or whatever it was, that's a that I think that's a pretty good average. Uh, you know, I so. I would incline to agree. And that reminds me of something else. Uh all of you were in makeup roles in this. So what was the average time to apply makeup? And the follow-up question a lot of people don't remember, what was the average time to remove it? A lot shorter. That's yeah. for sure. I, you know, real quick, uh, the, I found the Ferengis to be a lot faster, maybe an hour and a half, maybe maybe a little longer than that if there was some snag. Uh, but Wayun was uh, about two and a half hours to maybe three, two and a half. Wow. Yeah, mine was three hours and an hour to get out. Well, you needed all that makeup, case. So, well, I learned from the best, Jeff. I learned from the best. <laughs> Mine was three and a half hours for his what? wardrobe. Yes, what? Like, that's about no, how long Zander. it takes me in real life. Oh. So, you know, no. Um, Michael Dorn's makeup would take less time than Marina's makeup on. TNG. That is what she always recounted because beauty makeup with you know, glitter and lashes and everything. And my wardrobe was, my shoes were sewn right into my wardrobe. So all of that, there's, there was quite a lot to do each day. I was called at 4 a.m. Um, so yeah, it took, it took a while. It, I, that's what I, beauty makeup is. I can't wait to hear Max recount how long it took to, to do his. You know that story, uh, right, Max? Uh, uh, not sure, but uh, I remember pretty exactly uh, my makeup times. It was it was 50, five zero minutes to take it off. 50 minutes to take it off. When we started the show, it was three hours. At the end of season two, they got it down to two and a half. And by the end of season three, it was two hours to, to put on that makeup. And uh, I, the, the, the makeup story I have is when they they gave me the wrong call time. And I, I this is when the makeup was three hours. They gave me the wrong call time. And I had to, when I got to the set, I had to be in makeup as soon as possible. So they had two, this is the first season, two of the female makeup artists working on each side of my face. Wow. And... Uh, they they got it down. They got it down. They shaved like forty five minutes off of it. I, I, I'm going to stop there because I'm not sure how the rest of the story goes. Yeah, let's get to the fans club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you yeah. calculated that if they had enough time, it would take them negative three minutes and forty seven seconds. That is true. That is the that is the punch line. Yes. But, but, yeah, Max, yeah, yeah. I just want to know who did your makeup for today. It looks great. Uh, that would be uh, probably Karina, my wife, uh, did that. Did that make that? Yeah. Patty, take uh, it away, Patty. Let's get on yeah. with it. No worries, no worries. Yeah, like 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 you said. Thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. And yes, we are good to go on our fan questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Lisa. Goes by the handle number one Trek fan. She comes to all of our Trek events. Is there anything from Star Trek that still influences you to this day, Jeff? He influences me too. Uh, yeah, Casey influences me, not necessarily in a good way. Every, uh, uh, listen, I mean, just the basic tenets of Star Trek uh, itself uh, influences my 
my my life uh inclusiveness uh uh tolerance uh yeah there's swashbuckling and there's adventure but there's also um acceptance uh and if anything deep space nine you know in a metaphorical way kind of teaches human beings how to get along with people that are different which we could use a lot more of these days yeah and, and then, you know the thing to me with that it, it keeps remembering you know actually shakespeare said it that you know there are there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy Horatio. and star trek really keeps that it keeps that away that we are not alone you know we're not alone and no matter how much we think we're alone, no matter how, how much we think we're the smartest or we think we're the brightest or the best, that there's always something to be learned, you know, and how it can bring a world together. I mean, you all of us have been all around the world meeting fans and all this, and it's extraordinary how this show has affected people and why it affected people in, in a pretty much unanimously positive way, I think, anyway. So. I would, Absolutely. I would agree. From the very earliest episodes when Spock stood up for Pike, who was completely different in, an, in a, a situation where he could not help himself, but Spock was able to help. And Spock took great risk, at the risk of his own life, to stand up for someone. That he was Whether, loyal to. Yeah. Say it again? That he was loyal to. That he that was loyal to. To stand up for a colleague, to stand up for who knows? I don't know even how 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 well they really knew each other. But Spock stood up for someone in need is is what I took away from that. And again, at great risk, Kirk said, "Risk is our business," and that's a, a, a huge part of what we talk about. I'm just saying for me personally, that's a huge part of what we talk about and do in the coalition. You know, a lot of times people see kindness as oh kindness, but kindness is gutsy. It's black and white and red, and it takes courage. And that's the kind of courage that we need. That's Star Trek kind of Starfleet courage in this world where people, there is so much inequity where any of us could have been born in any place and time. If you're listening to this, you won the birth lottery. And of course, it's up to each one of us to make something good out of what we're given. And that is our responsibility and our doing. But to have the kind of head start that most of us have is, is a truly wonderful thing. And it's fun to use what we, what we have to stand up for people who, who need it. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, we want to make it a world where we can all live long and prosper. And that's my takeaway. And that's what we do every day with the coalition's work. Outstanding. Well spoken. And if I could get a little nerdy, uh, Spock served under Pike for 12 years, technically. Oh, sorry. So they were, no, 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 no. I was saying is that they, they, there's a whole point. He had had a bond with him. So like you said, though, he had had a bond with him that he was willing to throw everything away, including his own life in the, in the, in the, in the cage to, to do that for him. So that's, Duly noted. Thank you for that. I gotta watch again. <laughs> it's one of those. It's one of those nerdy back things. That yeah, anyway. So I, I'm you've just sure. proven yourself, Patty. Thank you. I that, that's that's how I got this job. So anyway, but thank you again, Max. <laughs> how about you? Well, I agree. I agree with what everybody's saying. And uh, the thing that uh, the the thing that comes to mind is a say uh, a quote that Gene Roddenberry uh, made uh, that there'll be a day when when people will not just tolerate the differences between each other, but will appreciate them and kind of bask in, in the glory of that. Uh, I'm, I'm messing up the quote terribly, but uh, I, 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 that has had a great influence on me. And it has a great, it, whenever I'm starting to judge somebody and uh, um, that, that quote comes to mind and I do a lot of judging. So yeah, thank you. I don't know, I don't know. No, Roddenberry, he had this wonderful vision that humanity would would get itself together and 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 yeah. and, and not not try to force its way into the universe, but just try to lead by example. They're like, this is we're living together in peace and harmony works for us. Maybe it might work for you. You know, mm -hmm. and that's that to me, that's the core of a lot of Star mm -hmm. Trek. Yeah. Indeed. And Lisa, thank you. Great question to start us off with. Hey, what do we have next? Here's one from Rebecca. What has been your favorite role to date? Hmm. 
being a father. <laughs> How about that? Uh, my favorite role. I, I have a I have a number of them. Uh, I, I don't know. There are, people ask me like on Star Trek, what's your favorite role? And I always ask them if they have children. And if so, what's your, which one's your favorite? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't, doesn't quite, yeah, that sort of gives it perspective. Oh. That you, you, you can bat, you can, you can recuse yourself. That's totally fine. Max, you go next, Max. Uh, well, uh, well, my my Rom is the role I had for the longest amount of time and did the most episodes of. And uh, you were a genius had, as Rom. You were a genius. Had one of the had one of the great story arcs uh, of uh, of of DS Nine and and maybe Star Trek. Uh, so uh, my favorite role and and got lead of the Dabo Girl. I don't know how he did that, but he got lead of the Dabo Girl. Because you're good so, in bed, uh, that's why. I that's would, I would, I would have to say, uh, uh, Rom was has been my favorite role to date. Yeah. Chase, go ahead. There. I mean, how could I not say Lita because of all of the things that it's brought me and all of the fun that we had with it? Um, I, I loved my role in Yesterday Was a Lie. I played a jazz singer and I got to sing four songs in the film. Um, it, uh, I love the role of Mirror Lita in Star Trek Online. I have to say that. And anybody who doesn't watch Star Trek Online, you should watch it, play it, play Star Trek Online. Mm -hmm. And particularly in case I don't get to say this later, Star Trek Online will give you more Deep Space Nine episodes. Uh, it has almost all of the actors in it and it has some really excellent writing. There's a, a whole expansion with a Ferengi caper and a lot of fun things that we do. So I have a really good time playing uh, Mirror Lita, who is so evil she would eat the board queen for breakfast. Like <laughs> really seriously a piece of work. I, I don't think any Trek actor has had a bad time playing the mirror evil universe of, of their yeah. regular character. It's uh, I know everybody's, Ooh, we're going to the mirror universe. Put on the goatee. Yeah. But Brunt in the mirror, mirror universe was a nice guy. He's a lovely guy. That's because he was such a jerk in uh, not the mirror universe. Right. right. I know. But mm. when you're a villain in the, in the series and then you go to the mirror, you're the opposite of that. Yeah, that's how. That, yeah. Oh, that's how that works, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Good for me, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Casey, how about you? What's been your favorite gig today? Well, I mean, to me, my favorite, my favorite characters have been on stage. Uh, of course, Damar is. You know, here we are. How many years later, uh, and we're still living and dealing with these characters that have given so much to so many people. But personally, my favorite stuff. I played Elmer Gantry in the big musical. I played the musical version of It's a Wonderful Life. I mean, you don't get, I mean, this is incredibly fulfilling stuff, but it's amorphic. Amorphous means it's gone like that, you know. Yeah. We will we will continue. You'll be able to see us for 100 years on these shows, you know. But, uh, or more. More, probably. But my, my favorite stuff I did is because, and I'll say why, is because we're in control on stage. When we're on film, we have no control. What's, we don't, you know, you know I've did, done movies where I was, you know, starring and never even ended up in one frame of the film, but contractually they had to still put my name up there. So you know, it's not it's not an act, film is not an actor's medium. The cool no. thing about DS Nine for us, for me anyway, was that they wrote so well for all of our characters, for 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 Chase and Max and Jeff and me and everybody else uh, that it became like putting on very comfortable clothes, which was great. We were in wonderful hands for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Truly. Absolutely. Rebecca, thank you. Wonderful question. And what do we have next? And here's one from Ocelot. What was the most challenging techno babble line you remember having <laughs> to learn? <laughs> and I'm not sure if you know the line, but maybe the circumstances of that scene. I'd say there were a number of those. You get a script, you look at it, and you go, whoa, there's the obstacle course. That's what <laughs> sound, that's what I gotta make sound. The inhibitor from the Lassiter in the second quadrant of the uh, millennial uh, triquandering. Uh, you know, you just it makes no. You have to make it make sense and then throw it away as if it's conversational. That yeah. takes a lot of work. 
takes a lot of work. There's a lot of repetition in that to make it sound easy. It takes a lot. You're right. And that's why it's a testament to how wonderful all these actors are, because you really you really have to be good to make it sound like it's coming from an organic place, no matter what kind of a creature you're playing on this these shows. And uh, DS9 in particular had fantastic actors. You know, uh, I can't say that for all the shows, but I'm not going to go in any further than that. But uh, I think we had some terrific actors who knew how to 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 grab and tackle language. And you really have to be confident and good and pretty well trained to really tackle that kind of language to make it sound organic. To use a baseball metaphor, we had a deep bench. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It is why they tend to cast theater actors in Star Trek, because all of us with solid backgrounds in theater, yep. solid classical training, all of us have done pro professional language shows, Shakespeare yep. professionally. Everybody pretty much in the cast has done this work prior to Star Trek, so they know they can trust us. Very much so. I just I just remember Aaron, uh, Aaron Eisenberg, rest in peace, uh, I just remember him uh, walking around with the script saying to himself, uh, it was a scene between him and Jake. Uh, it's, he was rehearsing saying to himself, uh, self-stealing, self-sealing stem bolts, self, whatever I said the first time, I think, self-sealing self stem bolts, not self-stealing stem bolts. Yeah. Hey, that's, yeah, I, that, I would didn't have that would be a challenge. I, I didn't have any, I didn't have anything that difficult, but he did. Yeah. Self sealing Ooh. stumbles. Self -sealing Oogie. Stumbles. Oogie. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> Aaron would tell that story if he were here, and he admitted it took them like 48 takes. It was crazy. <laughs> I understand it was a lot of takes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I envy the time that you all had with him. I, I, I adored his character. I adored the unexpected arc they gave to his character. Same as everybody else, too. Everybody who started out in the show. They really went into some unique and but still organic directions that just felt this feels right. I didn't see it coming, but it feels so right. Kind of like life, you know. You yeah. Start one place, and how did I get here? Indeed. <laughs> and this is going to come from Eric, and they would want to know what series have you currently been binge watching? Oh God! Louder Milk, excellent. Louder Milk, Peaky Blinders. Fantastic, Sons of Anarchy. All of these shows I thought I was going to hate, and I loved them. Loved them. Excellent acting, excellent writing, uh, just terrific stuff. Those are three of some. Yeah. You know. I haven't jumped into the last season, but I've been. I'm a, I'm a big uh, Harry Bosch fan, so I've been watching Bosch, mm -hmm. and uh, I just tipped my dip my toe into Ted Lasso, and I'm loving it. Oh yeah, good. I'll have to watch that. Too. Oh. It's delicious. Mm. Nice. nice. Max, you watching anything? I, well, we are watching something which I didn't know existed. It's a Shonda Rhimes show called, uh, uh, what is it? Grey's called? Anatomy? Uh, Scandal. Scandal. Oh, yeah, Scandal. Yeah. Scandal. Yeah. And it's all, I don't know when it was on the air, but we just, we just start, started watching it. And when it's, it's, uh, it, we, we can't Very put good. it down. So we, we've been watching it for a while now. Yeah. Nice, nice. Chase, what have you, what's been on your dial? I have to be honest and say, I, I keep myself going pretty nonstop. So I haven't taken time to watch a lot lately. But when I have watched lately, it's been 1960s and 70s half hour. I really I love a lot of that too, Chase. I love what they do. I mean, they have brilliant episodes. Um, I really got into Adam's Family lately. Um, <laughs> I, I think those shows are so playful and so well written, and there's just a, a lovely whimsicality, uh, which is something I'm a big fan of. And Jeff, so. Jeff always sits there and says, "Boy, that." That June Cleaver is a damn fine looking woman. Uh, how about her? <laughs> so when I, you know, and I also, every time it, it come, I like uh, Heroes and Icons cha cable channel or what, uh, original series Star Treks. It's like, oh, here we go. Spank, hey, me, <laughs> you. I don't know. Uh, I just, yeah. Go back to the Knight Rider. Huh? 
Night Rider. I mean, it's yeah. Night Rider. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, myself, I discovered. Uh, I discovered Startup, uh, which was a show on Crackle, but they just ported it to uh, Netflix. Three seasons and Ron Perlman and a, a really remarkable uh, young cast. I think all have very much potential. So that's yeah. my fun. And Eric, thank you. Very fun question. What do we have next? From Mars, what skill or technique have you most recently mastered in your career? Ooh, what skill or technique? Mastered. I don't know about mastered. Or recently. I'll tell you, during this lockdown, I've been playing my guitar a lot. It's my therapy. So I'm, maybe I'm getting better at that. Maybe. Yes, I would say you are. Yes, you are. Okay. There you go. Uh, mastered skill or technique. Writing <laughs> lyrics. You have mastered writing lyrics, Max. Most. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, no, I haven't mastered it at all. But I'm tr I'm trying to move up on the piano. I would like to oh. one day to be able to play piano. That's the simple. Sounds like a simple thing, but uh, you no. got a left hand and you got a right hand, and they got to know what each other's doing. That's Nothing the problem. simple about it. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I need two left hands. I think I do better. So. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll keep you posted hey. on that one. Yeah. There you go, Casey. How about you? Uh, so I'm writing scripts, script writing. I've got a couple scripts I'm working on. I'd never done that before, and I I wrote one and filmed it, and we shot it. And it was very good. Now I've got a couple other ones I'm working on. So, all right. Uh, do you write them in the computer? You know, in a word yeah. program or something? Yeah. So that's the final, final draft is, thing. It's called final draft. Yeah, it's a good one. Sylvester Stallone said he wrote. He writes on a legal pad and, and pencil. That's because he's so old they didn't have computers when he was <laughs> Wait, who says this, Matt? Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. The, the big screenwriter, Sylvester Stallone? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, big I just want to thank you for that. I, he wrote Rocky. I, well, he that's wrote true. Rocky. That's true. That's true. I, I, on I a legal pad. I wonder why you brought that. No, that makes sense. Yeah. As opposed to an illegal pad. As opposed to an that's illegal true. pad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Chase, have you uh, recently uh, tried to take on uh, a new skill, technique, hobby? I don't know that it's a new skill, but I find myself <laughs> getting reasonably good at strategy. Mm. Strategy is a good skill to have that can be used across the board in anything you do. And seeing what pieces fit together and challenging yourself on if I can make this happen, then in two steps, I can make that happen is, uh, is something I've been doing a lot lately. And, and it's fun. I, yeah. Are you saying strategy? Is that a game? No, it, no. It, well, yeah. It's life. Max, it's life. Oh, so to, to be more strategic. Yeah, yeah. Like Iago was strategic. Okay. What happened okay. to him? Right? Well, you know. Caused you a lot of mayhem. Not and, uh, exactly would, like that, but something you would be that. a great Jeff Combs. You would be a great Yago. I think I've told you that before, and maybe. What must I do I, to win my board again? Have something? you played that role? Have you played that role? No, I like that role. Mm. Okay, okay. He plays I, it with I, me all the time. Yes. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, Wei Wei Yun and Demars. Yeah. 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 Does that work? Mars, thank you. Very fun question. Uh, what do we have next? Uh, here's one from the number one Ferengi fan. If you were to return to Star Trek, but in a new role, what type of character would you like to play? Hmm. Return to Star Trek. I don't even give it a thought. I don't captain even of my own it. ship. The captain of my own ship. There you go. That's a, good one. That's a good one. I don't even think about this. I, 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 I put that out of my mind. I don't think that's a, uh, a path that will open up to me, quite frankly. A lot of fans ask this type of thing, or would you be willing to reprise? Of course, we would love that. It doesn't look like that's going to happen, as Jeff said. I, they're taking, it, I mean, it could, uh, but they seem to be taking new avenues with um with the shows and with the types of roles and going to new countries in order to film them. So it's a little tough making all those old people look as young as they did on the show. Right. You know, with that one particular series. Um, yeah. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Uh, so it have to be something new, except maybe a Ferengi. You could get away with a Ferengi makeup and be our age. 
You wouldn't fit in the costume anymore, that's all. Hey. <laughs> but what type of role? I would say, yeah, bring on Admiral Lita. Why not? Why? Let's bring sure. us all back in our, our mirror episodes. Fans always loved that. I, I would have been genuinely curious to see... Uh, after a period of time, how the how the Ferengi alliance would have it would have evolved under your two characters' uh, stewardship. I think that that would be interesting to explore. Mm -hmm. Brunt would have crushed them. <laughs> no, we would have gotten Brunt. We would have gotten Brunt on our side. I think, uh, yeah. one way or another. I was the Grand Nagus for a acting Grand Nagus. I was. I had a new cost. I, I I saw it the other day. I was flipping through, and it was like, oh my god, I'm the I'm the Grand Nagus. I had a, I forgot that I had a whole other costume and everything. I, I only wore that in one episode, and it was like gone. Oh well, mm. but 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 you had this yeah, this that everything else. So, and well, don't I, forget, they're, uh, they're, oh good, Max, go ahead. You know, I would like to say that when I got after a, a first season or so. I'd look around and see all the makeups people were wearing, and I'd look at the Cardassians and go say to myself, I never, ever want to wear that makeup because because of this. Yeah. You got, can you see my neck? Yeah, yeah. Never want to put that on me. And then over the years, uh, my attitude became, no, 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 I can do that. I can do that. I know I can. And, and accept the challenge of doing what Casey Biggs and... Uh, that Mark wasn't Mark makeup, Lyle. Max. That, that wasn't makeup. That's just Casey. That's why. <laughs> so uh, I would like to try to play. If if they would accept me, if the Cardassians would accept me, I would uh, probably get killed off in one episode, first episode, right? Uh, I would like to uh, wear the card, try the Cardassian makeup on for size and see how that feels, and if I could stand it like the other guys do. Yeah. 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 There you go, so, number one Frangie fan. Thank you so much. Uh, what do we have next? From Stevie B. What is a dream role in general for each of you? Mm -hmm. dream role. I don't really have one. Never got that specific for me. Like, gee, that got away. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, honestly. That's fair. Dream role. I like to play Juliet. I, I played Helena in a Midsummer Night's Dream. That was my first job um, for, a, for a summer. And I always wanted to do that. And I have thought many times, why, why couldn't, you know, these are such age old, in all of Shakespeare, these are such age old themes, uh, such themes that cross boundaries. That's why these stories are so transcendent and, and so, long, so long popular. Uh, so, so that would be my thing. It's a um, wonderful role. I've enjoyed performing it whenever possible, the right? Best Juliet, the just best Juliet I ever played with was Jeff Cohn. <laughs> I can imagine. Full of vexation come I with complaint against my daughter, Hermia. Oh, he played uh, old Nidar or something. What's his yeah, name? A, 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 That's right after, right after I got my equity card, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was Max, like, usually what, you do that. Max, what role do you want to, would you do? Uh, I, 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 I'm happy for any role that anybody thinks of me for. I, I, yeah. And Good someone, someone thought of me for Rom and look, you know, that, uh, yeah, I, what is it to, for chance to dream? I, um, no, I'm, 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 my dream role is the next role that you give me. That's my dream role. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. Casey, if you write your own ticket, what would it be? Well, you know, I sort of like the whole reluctant hero kind of thing. Well, Damar was sort of a reluctant kind of reluctant hero. Or a traitor, depending <laughs> upon your point of view. <laughs> Coming out of the yeah. mouth of a weasel. That, you know, what does that mean? Uh, but to me, those are the best kind of parts that you got to be the hero. Uh, and I think all of us probably would like to play a role that we originate. You know, that's those to me are the best ones that nobody else has done them. You do it, and then if if you're in film, if you're in television, you're basically if if it's not your series, you're the guest bad guy or the guest good guy or whatever. But if it's your series, you can have a hand in all of that. Uh, feature films, you know, who knows? You know, it's it's such a business to to try to get a feature film done these 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 days that uh, 
you know, that's why people are doing their own work. But to me, I like the reluctant heroes, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a good archetype. Stevie B, thank you. Fun question. And I think we have time for one more. Let's see if we got a really fun one. Oh, who from Mary? Who was your favorite guest star on DS9? Whoa. Besides ourselves? Besides ourselves? Besides yeah. Jeff Cohn. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff. Well, I can tell you that the first time I ever played uh, Wayun, I uh, uh, the first episode, I was so excited that I was actually going to be in a scene with Clarence Williams the third, who just passed away sadly, yeah. because he was a bit of an icon when I was a kid as Link in the Mod Squad. Link. The cool quotient was very high, and I I just was really dazzled by that. Uh, so that's a guest star that I really liked. There you go. I would uh, I would say my favorite guest star was James Darren. Um, there you go. Uh, just a just an incredible guy, uh, and, and um, he, he was a great. Because he was so laid back, he was a great influence uh, for me on the set, having him around, because I was always, whatever the opposite of laid back is, that's what I am. So um, I always, yes, I always enjoyed that. it. I, what's that? We can attest to that. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so I always enjoyed him being around when, he, when I had a scene to shoot and he had a scene to shoot later in the day and he came in early and... It was just great to have his presence around. Yeah. Lovely. He grounded you. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> nice. Chase, did you have a favorite? Jimmy was, is so lovely. And I hope he comes back to GalaxyCon soon. Uh, he you. is very smooth. And it's part of what makes him so great at what he does. I also really enjoyed working with Vanessa Williams. Uh, she's lovely as a human. Uh, but I have to honestly say... And I'm not just saying this, my favorite guest star by far is Max Grudenchik. Max, you're oh, wow. so wonderful to work with. So lovely and genuine and hardworking and sweet. And you're so incredibly talented, but without ego. And it's just truly lovely to be around and just looking into your eyes as Rom and in everything that you do, you can just see who you are, who you are shines and I adore you. I think you're absolutely amazing. Chase, right back at you. And we go back a long, long time. We do. You and I. Before DS9. You did, yeah. you did, you did uh, Janet's play, Janet Chamberlain's play. Uh, and uh, yeah, oh, at, the, at this, that place in Silver Lake. Um, Company of Angels. Uh, Company of Angels. That's when yeah. I first saw you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you showed, back. and then you showed, and I was so impressed. And then you showed up on the set. And I said, I know you. Thank yeah. You. Long, long time you. ago. Oh, Thank you, Chase. It's lovely. Thank I'm you. so grateful to be opposite you. It was a delight to see your characters together and the, the relationship that that the writers provided you and the performances that you guys gave to it. No one ever says that about you and me, Casey. No. <laughs> but it was lovely. <laughs> but it was lovely to see the two of us <laughs> together. Yeah, That's because uh, you and I were like, we just, we, we didn't work with anybody else practically. That's we, right. We were in our little bickering bubble. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, the one way who wanted Odo's blessing, I thought that was the best scene out of all the way -uns. Um, we like that, that benediction that was so against Odo and he so didn't want to be, but he did that. He did that favor for him. And hey, listen, let, let me tell you something that wasn't hard to play because I so, I had worked with Renee uh, 10 years prior for a couple of summers uh, doing rep. And so I, I really respected him and revered him as, a, as an actor and an artist. So that was easy. Fair. And Jeff Combs, uh, speaking of that, is it true that Renee recommended you for for the show for DS9? Yes, that's well, it's, how, from, well, it's uh, from another role, right? I mean, this is how tenuous all of this, these opportunities are, really. I had gotten cast by Jonathan Frakes in a one 
call it was meridian was the uh was the episode title and i a, a, a species that only appeared once uh but but it just so happened that renee was we, we reconnected but i didn't have any scenes with him but we saw each other on set but he was prepping to direct for the first time an episode a ferengi episode and he's the one who went to the producers and said, what about Jeff for this new character, Brunt? Uh, and they were somewhat resistant because, I, you know, like any producer, they go, but he just, we can't do that. And he convinced them that it's makeup. There's makeup involved. So got me on the dance floor, Mr. Mr. Aubergine. Wow. That's wow. cool. Very nice. Very nice. And Casey, bring us home. Well, except for, you know, besides all of these wonderful people here, uh, which were, I think I only, Chase and I only had one or two little fun little interactions and, 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 uh, what kind of fun little interactions are you? Well, I, I'm, I think I made jokes about how beautiful she was or her, her how little, something clothes, like that, little clothes she was wearing or something. That was kind of like messing that. around with a lot of different aliens in those days. So I don't know. Who, her or me? You, Damar, was a little loose, okay? Yeah, you know, a little. You're the, you're the one who told me I had a wife and kid. I didn't even know I had a wife and kid. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I Nathan, I, I, of course, I adore working with Jeff. Uh, and I would have to say one of the others was Andy Robinson. Andy one. Robinson. I regret uh, I never had a scene with Andy Robinson. Well, he I killed you. Come on, didn't he kill you? Yeah, but he's standing over there, and I don't think I had one back and forth with him and then he he, 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 he blitzed me it was, so, in his, it was in his contract that he would never have yeah he said make sure i am never on the sound stage with that man ever <laughs> <laughs> uh mary thank you wonderful question and GalaxyCon viewers wait 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 wait, wait. isn't there what? oh Scratch my question. Okay, forget about it. Somebody oh, wanted yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen and lady, as always, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go? Wash long and prosper. Wash I love Star and Trek good. and everyone involved. Thanks for joining us. And we hope to see you in our individual sessions. And if so, or if not, follow us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Keep in touch. Uh, Casey and Jeff, we have got to find time to rehearse. Oh, we will. We have time. You just got to, you got to look at the schedule. We okay. have to. Okay. We got a okay. big gaps of time. So we're good. And love you, Chase. Love, love you. you, Max. Very much. We'll, we'll see. We'll see you in person soon. Yay. Can't wait to see you, Max. Very soon. Yeah. Very soon. You too. They're Chase. talking about Las Vegas, guys. If you're going to be at the Las Vegas convention, we look forward to seeing you there. Yes. If not, see you online. It has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for all your great questions. We hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember that smiles are free, so spend them often. Mm -hmm.